The $25,000 South Australia Pacers Derby at Globe Derby Park in January featured the clash of former stablemates Albuquerque and Newsbreaker. Graham Morgan had prepared both Colts as two-year-olds, but in a surprise stable switch in late December, Albuquerque was transferred to Noel Alexander. Having his first start for Alexander and with a Tuka Rainsman John Caldo in the sulky, Albuquerque rated 159.7 in his narrow victory running his final quarter in 28.8 seconds. Last of all, 700 to go in the South Australian derby and the pilot Albuquerque. He holds all the aces. He's got the other one outside him, Newsbreaker. Franco Capri's always travelled well on their back. Prince Feller on the inside, now getting pushed out there by Patchwood Star. They having a bumping duel, those two. Barunga Fox, then Lord Vic, Lombo Cochise, Emblem Boy. Further back, just jogging and fluke, but off the back, it's Albuquerque. By three metres, Newsbreaker trying to lay down the gauntlet. He can't quite get on terms for the moment. Back on the inside, Patchwood Star. Then came Franco Capri. Further back, Prince Fella. And then Lord Vic and Barunga Fox. Albuquerque by two metres. Caldo looks confident. Newsbreaker the outside. Patchwood Star running up behind them, but Albuquerque kicked away. Albuquerque by four or five metres. Newsbreaker the outside, and then Patchwood Star. But it's Albuquerque all the way. A great two-state double for Noel Alexander. Albuquerque, four metres, second home newsbreaker. Third in was Patchwood Star. A break Albuquerque staked a claim on the Australian three-year-old of the year crown after snaring his second blue riband in the space of a month when he won the $30,000 Winfield Tasmania Derby at the Hobart Showgrounds in February. With regular stable rangeman Chris Alford sitting calmly in the sulky, Albuquerque could scarcely have been more impressive in rating two minutes, 0.5 seconds for the 2,379 metre trip after sprinting his final 800 metres in 58.7 seconds. Past the 400, they leave the back straight in Albuquerque, the leader. Irritators running a nice race behind it on the fence. Barony Rex has had enough on the outside as Astral Francais. Coming into it as Patchwood Star and on the outside of it, Spanish Chef. Albuquerque holds all the answers coming to the home turn. It leads by just over the sulky seats coming into the straight. Irritators out in second place, followed further back in the field in to a Patchwood Star running on, but Albuquerque far too good. In the run of the post, goes on to win it very easily. Irritator has run second, flying home for third, Patchwood Star. Then Local a... rangeman Robbie O'Connell returned to a reception normally accorded an Inter-Dominion winner after combining with Khan's Thunder to win the $70,000 Victoria Derby at Mooney Valley a fortnight later. Khan's Thunder started at double figure odds in downing the class field, but it was a very popular victory. Attempting a clean sweep of derbies, Albuquerque had to be content with the minor money. 1.4 at the 850. Albuquerque's in a nice run. A neck away on the outside. Prince Fella. Here's Newsbreaker. He pulls out now, but coming out in front of him, Jeremy Lee. He's out now, running out three wide, forcing Newsbreaker out four wide. Then Astral Francais. Can't stand to the leaders back, followed by Barani Rex and Betcha Boots. Stroma third last, hard driven, followed by Grey Power. And six metres away, Press King. They are humming in the derby towards the 450. Second quarter, 31.3. Astral Francais now pulls out. He raced up on the outside to join Albuquerque before the turn, 350 metres out. Four metres away, Khan Thunder. He's had a good run third. Prince Fella gone. Under pressure, Barani Rex, Jeremy Lee. Then Newsbreaker, Betcha Boots and Stromer. Great power and Press King at the 180. And here comes Khan Thunder now. He's pulling out of the 180 out three wide. Third quarter, 20.7. In front of the 27-27 third quarter. Albuquerque tackled by Astral Francais and Khan Thunder. Khan Thunder's got to them on the outside. Astral Francais comes again. Khan Thunder just in front of the Derby's his. Khan Thunder wins by a metre to Astral Francais. Albuquerque third, flying home Barani Rex. Victorian filly Lee Vegas embarked on a Triple Oaks campaign after her record-breaking win in the $10,000 South Australian Oaks at Globe Derby Park on March 12. Driven by her Charlton trainer Mark Boyle, Lee Vegas shattered both the race and class record as she carved out sensational sectional times in one of the easiest South Australian Oaks wins in history. Her mile rate of 201.3 slashed more than a second off the previous record with her final 800 metres in 58.2 seconds. OK, 600 to go, they sped up to 30.9 and the leader, China Blue, look at Lee Vegas go, Three Dawns trying to go with her. In the centre there was If You Dare, followed by Karamia Yellowbird. Lee Vegas went straight past them like they were tied to the fence. Lee Vegas raced away with a lead of about 10 or 15 metres on Three Dawns. Ridotto getting out after them, then China Blue, Karamia Yellowbird, further back If You Dare, Vienna Knight, wait a while and on Sean 
Don Truce, but this has bolted away Lee Vegas. Comes to the home turn with a lead of 25 metres, three dawns, Ridotto. Caramia Yellow Bird away from the rail and in China Blue. But what a one act affair. Lee Vegas is going to bolt in with the Australia Post South Australian Oaks, and she is stamped urgent. Lee Vegas wins by 35 metres, Ridotto. Third, Caramia Yellow Bird, then three dawns. China. At Harold Park 30 nights later, Lee Vegas could not have been more impressive in adding the $50,000 New South Wales Oaks to her tally, this time with Gavin Lang in the sulky. Settling well back from an awkward barrier, Lang allowed Lee Vegas to cruise up outside the leader, Jamie Land, at the 1600 metre mark. And she went to the line hard held to win by three and a half metres, rating 201.3. Dream. There's the bell with a round to go. 31 8 the second quarter. And out of the straight, Jamie Land by three quarters to Lee Vegas. Prima Ballerina on the fence is third. Galdina's coming around them deep. Naliska in the centre. Then Copper Queen, Caramere, Yellowbird. Brittany and Ensign's Dream and a clear last. Pammy Bam along the back. Jamie Land the leader, but under some pressure. Lee Vegas is striding up very quickly on the outside. Galdina a length away coming into it. So too is Naliska in the centre. Then Copper Queen the fence and further back. Caramere, Yellowbird and Ensign's dream but running out of the back and the leader Lee Vegas shot past Jamie Lan Naliska in the centre running a good race from Galdina and further back is Copper Queen and Ensign's dream but on the home turn Lee Vegas is clear Naliska second with Jamie Lan the fence then Copper Queen Lee Vegas in front though in the straight Naliska's trying hard but they're not going to get Lee Vegas she's holding Naliska a distant third Jamie Lan but Lee Vegas another big win Lee Vegas by three quarters to Naliska a distant third Jamie Lan then Copper Queen Galdina. Lee Vegas was shooting for her eighth straight win for the season and a record equaling third Oaks victory when she lined up for the $40,000 Victoria Oaks at Mooney Valley the following month. A long odds on favourite, Lee Vegas went straight to the front but had a tendency to over race which ultimately led to her downfall with victory going to the Ted Demler trained and driven My Cherie. It was Demler's second Victoria Oaks win as he piloted Shelley Lee to victory in 1985. Demler overcame a severe bout of flu to win behind My Cherie, who rated a race record of 159.8 for the trip. In the Oaks, they head to the back at the 650, second quarter in a 30.2, and she's flying in front, Lee Vegas. She's 12 metres in front. Naliska pulls to the outside now into second, placing out three wide. Everest is under pressure. Jamie Lane makes its move out three wide to third. Then Adhika in behind them came on the outside. My Cherie followed by Marty's last. Paul of Pride drops out, followed by Babinda Gull, Delmont Rita, and tailed off Kelly Khan around the turn towards the 250. Third quarter, 29.4. Lee Vegas in front, two metres away, My Cherie pulls out now, three wide into second placing, gee, she's running a race, My Cherie she's coming out after Lee Vegas Lee Vegas flat, there's not much there, she's gone, My Cherie got for her oh, the Campbells cash and carry, Victoria Oaks will go to My Cherie, look at her go, Lee Vegas can't go on boxing on Naliska and also Jamie Land, but a mighty effort by My Cherie, inconvenience at the start and My Cherie wins by six metres, Lee Vegas has run second she fell in a hole Third, Naliska. Fourth, Jamie Land. Again. Goldina, who was fourth to Lee Vegas in the New South Wales Oaks, provided connections with some compensation when she made a one-act affair of the $20,000 Winfield Tasmanian Oaks in Hobart a week later. A prohibitive one-to-eight on favourite, Goldina was never under any pressure in leading throughout to win by nearly 10 metres. Goldina is trained and driven by leading Tasmanian rangeman Neville Weverly who races the filly in partnership with his wife, Tina, on lease from prominent owner-breeder, Arthur Barker. The win gave Weverly his fourth training success in the classic race in the past five years. His previous wins were with Lady Allura, 1990, Sylvan Lass, 1991, and Rose's Heart, 1992. Into the back straight, just under 500 to go, and Goldina was still going nicely in front. Champ for Lady being tapped up in second place. Tough Seeks had enough. Rose of Corralta around the outside of it. Emma Polar is running on. Then came Diamond Pennant, Killer Queen and Weenie May. Off the back and Goldina showing the touch of class. Moves away from the opposition. She's gone 8 or 10 metres in front. Champ for Lady under pressure. Can't find a thing. Then came Emma Polar. But this is going to be how far around the corner. Goldina's well clear. Into the straight. She straightens up with the Oaks. Well in the keeping. Champ for Lady is running second. Emma Polar third. Then behind them Rose of Corralta. But Goldina slowed down to a walk in the run of the post. Wins it easily. Champ for Lady runs second, Emma Polar third on the outside of uh, Rose of Corralda. The immediate future of dual New Zealand derby winner Gingerman 
was in doubt after his humiliating loss in the $100,000 New South Wales Derby at Herald Park on April 22. Backed as if unbeatable on the strength of an imposing record which included wins in the New Zealand Derby and the Great Northern Derby, Ginger Man was the first horse beaten after setting breakneck pace. Queensland cult Jeremy Lee provided his trainer Bill Dixon and his rangeman son Grant with the biggest win of their careers when he beat Astral Francais and Franco Highlight in the Blue Riband event, rating 158.8. From the rear now, Newsbreaker coming out, Betty Chen coming in front of it though and pushes it four deep. We own a brave easing one away from the rail in the centre and then wrong bed and Verony Rex into the back and the field is bunching. That uh, second quarter, 31-6, the half, 61-6. And down the back and the derby, the New Zealander Ginger Man. About a neck, Astral Francais putting some pressure to him now. A length away, Jeremy Lee can't get a run, he's going well but can't get clear. Wide out, Newsbreaker is making ground, Arian Star in the middle and then Betty Chen, Astral Francais. Francais goes past Ginger Man. He didn't find much Ginger Man and Astral Francais race to the lead. The Queenslander Jeremy Lee is coming out after him now. Followed by Newsbreaker and then Franco Highlight. And further back in the race, Birney Rex. Ginger Man's dropping right out of the race. But around the turn, Astral Francais the leader. On the outside, Jeremy Lee is coming after him. Franco Highlight's getting up on the rail. Astral Francais in front. Jeremy Lee is driving at him on the outside. The Queenslander Jeremy Lee gets up in the last stride. Jeremy Lee's got there to nail Astral Francais in the dark. Franco highlight a close third on the rail. Unraced as a two-year-old, Norm's daughter lived up to her big raps when she beat My Cherie in the $50,000 West Australia Oaks at Gloucester Park in late April. Starting from barrier 12, Norm's daughter was three wide for the first lap before challenging My Cherie for the remaining 1,300 metres. Powering away, over the concluding stages, Norm's daughter won by 8 metres, rating 158.8 for the 2,100 metres. The second fastest time in the 26-year history of the race, but 1.1 seconds outside Jane Ellen's race record. Pretty quick. It's a two-horse war at the 600 in the B-Act of WA Oaks. My Sharia, Norm's daughter. There's not a breath between them. They're five lengths to committal. First star. Chance to strike is running into fourth place. Norm's daughter's got a head in front of the Victorian Oaks winner as they leave the far side. But Demler's throwing everything at My Sharia. She's lifting and coming again. But it's Norm's daughter about a half length on My Sharia as they come to the 200. About six lengths away, committal and then chance to strike in a long gap to Adventurous Lady on the point of the turn. Can the green and wayward Norm's daughter blouse out this multi-classing winning superstar? It's Norm's daughter pulling clear. She can. She will. She's far too good. She's a sensation. Norm's daughter races away to win the Oaks. Two and a half lengths to my Cherie. She's a wonder horse, the winner. Four lengths off chance to strike. Northern trainer Jesse Moore began making flight arrangements for an interstate campaign after Trunky Maserati broke the Australian record in the $75,000 West Australia Derby at Gloucester Park in May. Suited by the fast pace, Trunky Maserati stormed home from the rear to win convincingly from favourite Swift Judge and Selector. Norm's daughter, who was responsible for the mid-race pressure on pacemaker Swift Judge, battled on well for fourth, only a neck from the third horse. A $30,000 yearling purchase, Trunky Maserati rated exactly two minutes for the 2,500 metre trip, breaking the race record by four-tenths of a second to become the first three-year-old in Australia to run two minutes for that distance. Nine, and there's the uh, blistering spark starting to fly now. Look at Norm's daughter go. Hooked out three deep to Campo. Tried to catch Swift Judge napping. And they're going to clap it on. 30.6 the first quarter. Norm's daughter drew nearly a length on Swift Judge with an electrifying burst of swift, uh, speed. But Kersley's going to try and keep her out. And they're together now as they come to the turn of the 900 and they put three lengths on the field. L.A. Renee holding down third from Sir Lecter. Van damage the local boy then trunky maserati a length and a half scanio on the fence is balvin's son and then hey i'm lucky well back to warrego golden little town blues that quarter in 28 7 they went through the half in 59.3 650 out in the derby and it's swift judge with the advantage of the inside held that first attack at bay leads about a head on norm's daughter he'll go up and have another crack at it now a length and a half to Allo renee then sir lector has had a nice trip and poised to strike.
strike for Hagedon, followed then by the local boy on the fence, Van Damage. Now Lewis about to hook out on Trunky Maserati. Here he comes, 29-9 that quarter, two lengths to Scanio. Then Balvin's son, Hey, I'm Lucky, Warrego Gold, Little Town Blues. Coming to the 200, the leader is Swift Judge. It's pulling out plenty. Norm's daughter a half length away. She's flat to the boards, trying to lift under extreme pressure. Three deep selector and four wide Trunky Maserati. He's finishing at the rate of knots. Trunky Maserati down the outside with a wing on every foot has reached the lead in the derby. It's the first for Chris Lewis. It's the first for Jess Moore. Trunky Maserati wins the derby. Second is Swift Judge. Third is selector. Riverina filly. Pammy Bam provided her Wagga owner trainer Laurie Buick and Rainsman Russell Jack with one of the biggest wins of their careers with an outstanding win in the $20,000 Queensland Oaks final at Albion Park in June. Jack brought the Southern Gentleman filly with a late finish from an awkward alley on the inside of the second row to win by a half neck. In the Oaks, 700 left to go. 31-5 was the next quarter. And Donahue is putting it to Miss Paula. They go head and head. Shirley's choice third. Fourth the inside. Maggie Majette sweating on a run. Prima Ballerina comes out three wide. Pammy Bam comes one off the fence but still held up. Bunya Blaze starts a run. Then Prolific followed by Skedaddle, Heathery, Copper Queen. And two off last was True Kiwi as they head towards the 400 metre corner. It'll be a survival of the fittest. Miss Paula ahead clear of Donahue on the outside still with a kick left. Maggie Majette third in urgent need of a run and then came Shirley's choice. Prima Ballerina under pressure. Bunya Blaze comes four wide and further back came Prolific and then Skedaddle and Copper Queen up to the home turn. Miss Paula under pressure and Donahue raced ahead clear. Maggie Majet comes three wide. Then Shirley's choice. Prima Ballerina and Bunya Blaze down the outside is the widest runner. Plenty with a chance. Maggie Majette got to Donahue. Coming through in the centre there was Pammy Bam. Pammy Bam coming after Maggie Majette. Pammy Bam. Pammy Bam gets the oaks from Maggie Majette, Donahue and Prima Ballerina. Khan's Thunder strengthened his claims on the Australian three-year-old of the year title when he humiliated his opponents in the $153,000 Oceana El Dorado final at Mooney Valley in June. Taking on rivals from five Australian states, Khan's Thunder was simply awesome in his six-metre win, rating 201.2 on the rain-affected track. Trained and driven by Robbie O'Connell, it was Khan's Thunder's 12th win with four minor placings from 16 starts and took his career earnings to $198,029. Fiona Brave turning out of the straight towards the 600 metres, second quarter in a 31 towards the 550 in the El Dorado. Sockets the leader by two metres to Trunky Maserati. On a limb out three wide as Van Time. The running man trails the leader. Dusty Mick in the centre, followed by Lombo Cachise. In behind the Motto Verima, followed by Electric Image. Then Khan Thunder. Fourth last towards the 400 metres, 20 metres off the lead. Now he pulls to the outside, followed by Rhythmic Gold Churn. And we own a brave as back of the tail around the turn towards the 250. Third quarter, 30.2. Trunky Maserati on the outside got the sock, but here comes Khan's Thunder. He's letting loose around the turn. He's winding up and in a bound. Khan's Thunder hit the lead. He raced away towards the 140. Trunky Maserati can't go on. Lombo Catrice on the outside making ground, but the El Dorado will go to Khan's Thunder. Another brilliant performance. Khan's Thunder wins by six metres. Lombo Catrice has run second, two metres away, third electric image. After turning in a shocker in the New South Wales Derby in April, Ginger Man produced his best form to win the $50,000 Queensland Derby in July. The racive scratching of top Victorian Colt Albert Kirky made it a bit easier for Ginger Man, who dominated betting on the race at 3-1 to one on with Andrew Peace in the sulky. Getting to the front with a mile to travel, Ginger Man beat Franco Highlight and Stormy Cove by two metres, rating 158.8 for the 2100 metres. It's Ginger Man. Ginger Man held together by Andrew Peace, a length in front of Franco Highlighter. Tritton getting anxious on him now. No run for Tador. Then came Star Loner. Bodine Classic can't get out. Norkin Stormy Cove. Louisiana Lad under pressure. Then Son of Fortune. Panama the way to go. And Tunga and it's no holds barred. 28 6 along the back straight. They're at the business end of things. And Ginger Man the leader. Franco Highlight on the outside won't be denied. Sweating on a run. Tador and Stormy Cove into the clear. Spreading home. Ginger Man flat to the boards. Franco Highlight trying ever so hard. Ginger Man packing plenty. He'll hold on. He'll win the Blue Riband. It's Ginger Man's day. From Franco Highlight, Stormy Cove, and Tador. Perseverance was rewarded when Newsbreakers scored a gutsy win in the $100,000 Australia Derby at Harold Park six nights later. The Graham Morgan trained and driven Colt had contested three previous derbies, with his best finish being a second to Albuquerque in the South Australian Derby. 
One of the outsiders of the field at 25 to 1, Newsbreaker, tracked up three wide with a lap to go and went to the front on the home turn. Rating exactly two minutes for the mobile 2350 metres, the win took his career earnings to $157,759, the result of 13 wins and 10 placings from 27 stops. Australian Derby, 30.5 and 31 six of the quarters. And as they swing out of the straight, Ginger Man just leads Weona Brave. Newsbreaker three wide. Khan Sunders tracking him forward. The Widows might the leaders back. In the centre, Astral Front Sayers 1-1 but held up for a run. Stormy Cove on its back. Loves a dare three wide. Lucky Camilla the fence. And our Savant Salada's last. 400 to go in the $100,000 Australian Derby. And Ginger Man just the leader. Newsbreaker three wide. Weona Brave in the centre, feeling the pinch. Astral Front Sayers peeling out four wide. Then the Widows might and further back, Stormy Cove. Khan Sunders not doing enough. He's a mile back and I don't think can win from there. Coming to the turn, Newsbreaker got his head in front of Ginger Man. The Widows might can't get out from Astral Front Sayers and Weona Brave. Newsbreaker on the outside, just in front of Ginger Man. A length away, Astral Front Sayers and the Widows might, but Newsbreaker's gone to the lead. The Victorians taking the lead on the derby. Ginger Man is kicking again. Newsbreaker just in front. Ginger Man kicked again, but I reckon Newsbreaker. Newsbreaker, a nose to Ginger Man, a length away third, the widow's might. Austral Francais, who was runner-up in both Victoria and New South Wales derbies, finally cracked it when he won the $20,000 RC Simpson sprint at Harold Park a week later. After an indifferent performance in the Australian derby, went fourth to Newsbreaker, Barry Rattray was able to give Austral Francais the run of the race before scoring by three metres, rating a track record 157.7. At the 400 metre mark, and the leader, Ginger Man, about three quarters of a length to Taydor. Astral Front say the fence, fourth Stormy Cove coming to the outside. We own a brave the inside. Newsbreaker out deep and loves a dare, last of the seven. Coming to the turn, though, and Ginger Man is still the leader. Clear of Astral Front say is about to get off the pocket now and come after the leader. We own a brave into third along the rail. Ginger Man in front, the Tasmanian Astral Front say is the big danger, though. Astral Front say raced up the Ginger Man, put his head in front, clear of We own a brave, and Astral Front say gets a well Deserved win in the Simpson sprint. Astral Francais has beaten Ginger Man and Weona Brave. My Cherie capped another magnificent season when she overcame a second row draw to win the $153,000 Oceana El Dorado final at Mooney Valley on August 6. Settling midfield from her poor barrier, My Cherie dashed home strongly to win by two and a half metres, rating two minutes for the mobile 1940 metre trip. One tenth of a second outside the race record shared by Cam's Revenge and Misty Maiden. It was Demler's 100th Victorian winner for the season. By Gary Rhapsody, 400 metres out before the turn, and here comes My Cherie. Now she pulls out three wide to third. She's coming out after the leaders quickly, 250 out on the turn. Third quarter, 29.2. Donahue just in front on the Liska, but My Cherie grabs the pair quickly on the outside. She wobbled around the turn, My Cherie, but she swept to the lead now towards the 150. In a bound, My Cherie raced away from the Liska. Then Donahue over the concluding stages, My Cherie and Ted Demler for the Eldorado. She's in front of Naliska and my Cherie wins. My Cherie by two metres to Naliska. Five metres away, third, nearly a dead heat. Maybe Donahue, a nose to next fantasy. Love In September 1994, Khan's Thunder was announced Australian three-year-old pacer of the year. Trained and driven by Robbie O'Connell, Khan's Thunder had 11 starts during the season for eight wins and two placings for $138,020 in stakes.